So by now I'm sure some of you have seen, or at least a lot of you have seen, some of the coverage surrounding AMD's Ryzen processors and their performance when they're loaded up with either a standalone Windows update or the upcoming Windows 24 H2 cumulative update. Our experience was interesting to say the least. We saw Ryzen CPUs getting some pretty big frame rate boosts across the board with some games being affected more than others. But overall, there was a net positive benefit to running one of these updates. The same thing goes for slightly older Ryzen 7000 and 5000 series processors, which didn't really come as a surprise since AMD themselves said these updates would affect Zen 3, Zen 4, and Zen 5 series CPUs. Well, 24H2 just rolled out officially a few days ago, so it's it's time to step things up. It's gradually rolling into Windows updates for laptops and desktops or as a standalone ISO on the Microsoft website. If you want a full backgrounder about all of this, you can check out the video right up here. But in this video, I wanted to shift gears a little bit, do something that nobody else has really done, and that's see if those updates have any effect whatsoever on Ryzen-based gaming laptops. And look, in order to get the most benefits from these updates on the desktop side, we needed to sort of like stack the deck in favor of the CPU. That was to install the fastest graphics card available on the market, an RTX 4090. That in effect pushed rendering bottlenecks towards the CPU, which allowed the enhancements made to AMD's scheduler all that much more evident. Laptops, on the other hand, are a completely different metric. And to be honest with you, we acknowledge that pairing up such a massively powerful GPU with any CPU is not necessarily a realistic situation for a lot of people. A lot of you guys are not actually going to see the benefits of these updates on the desktop side because you're simply running a slower GPU. So you're going to run into a couple of bottlenecks there. So for the laptop testing, I wanted to go down two very different routes. First up is the HP Omen 16, which is a perfect example of a more attainable everyday gaming laptop. This one is actually from last year. It has an RTX 4070 running at 95 watts and a Ryzen 9 7940HS. Overall, this is pretty representative of what a mid to medium high range gaming laptop looks like. The other laptop is the absolutely extreme case. This is the Strix Scar 17 X3D. It is simply the fastest AMD based gaming laptop we've ever tested. Actually, it might be the fastest ever launched. It's the only one that came with a Ryzen 9 7945X3D. So I guess it's a bit of a collector's item. It also has an RTX 4090, which uses the same core as the desktop RTX 4080, and it runs here at a pretty crazy 172 watts. So this thing, this thing right here, it's a best case scenario. If we don't see any benefits at all on the X3D laptops, chances are there's no way any AMD laptop user will see them either. But you know what you do wanna see? That's this case from Fantex. I don't know how Fantex does it, but the XT lineup offers incredible value for your money with these mid towers. The interior is ready for today's challenging needs with a 360 up top, up to 10 120 mil fans, any GPU would fit, it's BTF ready, and your choice of a cool presentation with the XT View model or high performance with the XT Pro and Pro Ultra. All of the illumination is tasteful and appreciated at this price point and everything is double boxed with protective corners so the XTs travel safe. Check them out below and spend responsibly. All right, that pretty much sets the stage. But before we step into benchmarking, there's a couple things that you guys need to know about how we set up these systems. First of all, there's a standalone update out there for Windows 23H2 that enhances the scheduler performance on Zen 4 and later processors. We could install it on desktop systems, but it was never pushed to either of these two laptops and we couldn't install it manually. So both laptops were first benchmarked running a fresh install of Windows 11 23H2 with all its latest updates installed. Then we reinstalled Windows using the 24H2 ISO on Microsoft's website. So both laptops were first benchmarked running a fresh install of Windows 11 23H2 with all its latest updates installed. Then we updated Windows using the 24H2 ISO on Microsoft's website. I also have to mention that both laptops originally came with Windows 11 pre-installed. So no, we won't be comparing performance to Windows 10 since that would be completely unrealistic. Anyways, on to the results. There are some games like CS2 that get a tangible boost in frame rates, and it isn't exclusive to the faster laptop either. I mean, sure, the X3D's advantages on 24H2 look impressive, but it's the 1% lows that'll make the biggest difference in the overall feel and responsiveness of this game. The same thing goes for the Omen 16, which gets about 10% better averages and a much larger uplift in the minimum frame rate department too. Cyberpunk seems to be the poster child for 24H2 performance uplifts on the desktop side, 
and it's doing it again on both laptops. The most interesting thing is that while the SCAR 17 X3D gets noticeable benefits from the update, the slower Omen actually sees its frame rates get boosted by a larger amount, at least as a percentage focused improvement. Meanwhile, Baldur's Gate highlights how situationally dependent the benefits of this update really are. They can literally come down to the system you're using, and the Omen's performance here is a great example of that. While the last two games showed its comparative increases being better than the X3D, here it gets just an incrementally small uptick. The SCAR 17 X3D though, well it really surges ahead with the update being able to deliver some impressive results. Avatar is another interesting story here, since on the desktop side at least, 24H2 wasn't beneficial in the least. Here though, we saw, well, what I'd call mind-blowing numbers on both laptops. I mean, this is a night and day difference, but it also reflects what some people are reporting in games like Rocket League, Call of Duty, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and a few others. Another game showing just how random these benefits are is Hogwarts Legacy, with the Omen 16 again seeing more of a benefit than the X3D laptop, especially in those 1% lows. Honestly, before we started testing, I was expecting the exact opposite, but here we're seeing the more affordable laptop just running away with things. There's a few other situations like this too, but they're a little bit less, I guess, in your face. Starfield is a perfect example of that, with the Omen getting a nice little bump while the ultra powerful laptop remains pretty stagnant. Alan Wake, well, that shows the same thing again, but only with a significant improvement in the Omen 16's 1% lows when it's running 24H2. So let's move on to Rainbow Six and the dynamics completely flip on their head yet again, with the Omen actually seeing a small performance regression while the X3D's results get a good boost, especially its 1% lows, and that seems to be a reoccurring story here. While the averages are impacted overall, it's those all-important minimum frame times that get propped up even more. And just like on the desktop side, there's a bunch of games that don't see any benefit whatsoever, likely because they aren't CPU bound or their game engines simply aren't impacted by the scheduler optimizations. As a matter of fact, there are a few more of those very, very minor performance regressions that went beyond statistical variance, since all the numbers we show are averages from five benchmark runs. But I actually think most people will be in this exact situation we're seeing here, where the in-game benefits of moving to 24H2 will be literally non-existent. I mean, luckily there weren't any game-breaking issues and any frame rate reductions we saw didn't impact gameplay in any way. But overall, I think there needs to be some expectation management here. This is not a magic bullet that'll blow up frame rates in every single game. And I know this video, to some people, might feel like we're beating a dead horse with all of this content focused on Windows 24H2 and some of the updates surrounding it. But for me, at least, this is probably the most interesting because it approaches the entire situation from, I guess, a little bit more realistic perspective, especially with the Omen 16. It's very different from having this unobtainium desktop system to see these edge cases where these updates might affect Ryzen processors. On the other hand, with the Strix Scar 17 X3D, we do have that impossible to achieve perspective. And I'm pretty sure you see where this is going overall. Benefits from 24H2 seem pretty scattershot, especially on the laptop side. They can vary wildly from one game and one system setup to another, with sometimes a mid-level gaming laptop like the Omen 16 seeing bigger overall uplifts than a beast like the SCAR 17 X3D. If you hit on the right game like we did with Cyberpunk, CS2, Avatar, and a few others, then yes, there are some night and day differences. But overall, we were looking at a less than 10% uplift after 14 games were taken into account. And you have to ask yourself, is that really worth it? I also can't help but feel that this whole hype surrounding 24H2 might be a little bit of a Trojan horse by Microsoft. It's like this, the scheme to get you to install Copilot Plus features on a perfectly working laptop or desktop. But the way I see it, 24H2 and its co-pilot focus introduces features that range from pointless to intrusive to potentially illegal in some countries. Sure, there are some quality of life items here, but overall it's just as bloated, if not more bloated than any Windows version before it. So while grabbing 24H2 or the standalone update for 23H2 is a no-brainer for AMD desktop users, laptops simply don't have the horsepower most of the time to take advantage of the scheduler enhancements. So personally, and this is again, in my opinion, I would actually pump the brakes if I was a gaming laptop user and I saw 24H2 pop up in Windows Update. There just is no tangible benefit to pop it onto your device and have 
some potential issues, maybe with battery life, Copilot Plus features that you don't want and don't need, and a host of other things. The benefits from a performance standpoint just aren't there like they are on the desktop side. So anyways, I hope this whole video allows you to maybe make the right decision when you maybe assume that the desktop benefits would translate to the laptop side and you make a good decision when it comes to either installing 24H2 or not. Anyways, I'm Mike with Haru Canucks and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.